What looks to be a welcoming home, nestled in the quiet town of Monroe, holds a very unwelcoming presence in the backyard. Tony Spera is the curator of the New England Paranormal Research Center and also son-in-law of the famed Seekers of the Supernatural, Ed and Lorraine Warren. Through the Warrens' well-documented career, they have researched over 3,500 paranormal cases, and one of the most infamous being the story of a very innocent-looking Raggedy Ann doll. This, of course, is Annabelle, the cursed doll. And there was a movie made about it called Annabelle, and she was also featured at the beginning of the Conjuring movie. This doll was given to a nurse in Hartford in 1970. She lived in an apartment with her roommate, and the mother of the nurse gave her this doll for a birthday present because the girl liked dolls. She was about 28 years old. You can even see on the doll, if you looked really close, you could see a little bracelet on her arm. So they would treat it as a little girl. One day they woke up, there was a piece of parchment paper on the floor, and on the parchment paper, written in pencil, it said, help me. Nobody owned parchment paper. Nobody knew where that note came from. Now the girl said, wait a minute, someone's probably coming in this apartment. So they set up a little, a little thing where they would put scotch tape on the door of the apartment. They would place the rug just in a certain location to see if anyone was in that apartment when they weren't home. Well, awoke to throw the doll all the way across the room when suddenly four slashes appeared on this young man's chest and stomach. Four on the chest, three on the stomach, and you could see actually the blood coming through the shirt. After being called in for an exorcism of the doll, Ed Warren later confiscated the doll and protected it in his museum. But the evil ensued when a Hartford priest visited the Warrens' home. So he brings the priest down and starts to explain about Annabelle. As he's explaining about Annabelle, the priest quickly walks over to the doll, almost like Lou, the, the fiancé, grabs the doll, throws it across this room, and says, he proclaims, God is more powerful than any devil or demon just like that. And Ed didn't know what to do. Ed says, Father, I just got through explaining, do not touch that doll, it's dangerous. On his way back to the rectory in Hartford that evening on Route 84, he never made it to the rectory. He went almost head on into a tractor trailer with that new car. And miraculously though, he wasn't killed, but the car was totaled. And he called later and spoke to Lorraine. He said, you know, the last thing I can recall is looking in the rearview mirror and seeing the image of that doll staring back at me in the mirror, then I lost control. But the interactions with Annabelle haven't always ended the same, like in this case of a young man who rode his motorcycle to the museum. The young man runs up to the glass case and starts banging on the glass like this. And he says, you know what? This is a bunch of hooey. This isn't real. If that doll can put slashes on anybody, do it to me right now. He challenged the doll. Ed said, son, you and your girlfriend, you have to leave. I can't put up with that. You go right now. So the kid is leaving with his girlfriend, a young man, about 20, and he's smirking and laughing about it as they leave. Again, he never made it to his home. Three hours later, that young man that came on a motorcycle was dead. Despite all of the very frightening supernatural events, believe it or not, some people still want to get their hands on the doll. One person sent me an offer for a million dollars, and I said, I'd be totally ir irresponsible to sell you that doll for a million dollars. He writes me back and said, how about two million dollars? I wrote him back, I said, the, the doll is not for sale at any, any price. It would be totally reckless and irresponsible to let that doll out into the public realm. Literally. Creepy. What the fuck? You know, fuck? real life is scary. It Scarier is. than the movies. Fuck these Maybe niggas. next time you can go to the museum Bro. with me and we can... Uh, no. no. No? Absolutely not. Bro! There isn't enough money in the world. Mm, not even um, $2 million? Mm, well... Uh, yeah. All right, now <laughs> let's reconsider. Hey, Welcome to Ray Shadowland. But Dom, pause real bro, quick. Like, you know the uh, craziest thing, bro? What? They said that them niggas did 3,500 cases. So, like, how can you not believe this is real, but at the same time, like, three fucking thousand cases of paranormal activity? Like, bro. Like, do you... I don't know if... I don't know what to believe, bro. Bro. Because that's... You know what? You know, like, I have, like, a conspiracy, like, 